Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about superclass constructors. I'm going to go ahead and open up my website here, javacjava.com. Click on the menu pop out, select the Java OOP tutorials, which is the Java Object Oriented Programming Tutorials page. I have a whole bunch more on the main tutorials page, by the way. I'm going to select Superclass Constructors. In my Superclass and Subclass tutorial, I discussed how subclasses inherit the members of a superclass. How does that apply to constructors? Well, constructors are not members, so the subclass doesn't inherit the superclass constructors. The subclass can invoke the superclass constructors by using the super keyword. When the new operator initializes an object, it will invoke the proper constructor based on the number and type of arguments being passed. The constructor in the subclass can pass its parameters on up the food chain to the superclass constructor. An example program is the best way to demonstrate this principle. Come down here, I'm gonna highlight all this stuff. Hit Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Move the browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt down here, but if you don't, you can create one really quick by right clicking on the desktop, selecting new and then shortcut. Hit in CMD, next, finish, and it is just that easy. Let's go ahead and open up the command prompt there. Type in Java C. You should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you don't, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before running the tutorials. Type in cd space backslash. cd is short for change directory. Backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to type in md make directory at Java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. We'll change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a, another directory, and I'm just going to call this superclass constructors. And let's change to it. I'm going to notepad superclass constructors as well. Java. Okay, superclass constructors. Java is going to be the name of our source code file, also known as our compilation unit. Let's go ahead and hit Control V to paste that in, or you could right click and select paste. Okay, I'll save this right off the bat. So the superclass constructors.java has three classes in it. I've got my good old box class here, right? Um, with four instance variables. Notice they're not encapsulated. They don't have the word pri keyword private in front of them or access modifier. Private. And then but I've got my no argument box constructor here with a call to super. And then I've got my box constructor, another box constructor here, and over uh, overloaded box constructor spe specifically with three int data types and a string type. And so basically when this constructor is invoked it'll go ahead and set the instance variable length, right? This, uh, quick, quick recap on this, this just basically contains an object reference to the current object, right? And then the dot operator accesses its members, so Essentially, you know, that is this.length accesses the instance variable length up here. This length here is the length parameter, also known as a local variable, so that will set, those will set all those values. So the parameters coming in here will get set to the instance variables up there. Pretty straightforward. Then I've got this simple method for return volume, and it'll simply return length times, length times height times width as a calculation of an int data type. And by the way, that's the length, height, and width of the instance variables up here. Now I've got a cardboard box class, and it extends box. And because it extends box, all of these, all of this, these are boxes members, and these are boxes members, right? These constructors are not members. So um, by extending box, we'll get the this member here that. Um, method and these four instance variables will become essentially part of cardboard box. I've got one instance variable string color declared down here in cardboard box and then cardboard box has its own no argument constructor here and then cardboard box has another over over uh, overloaded constructor here with uh, three int data types and two string types. 
When this constructor is invoked, the first statement here, what it'll do is we want to basically take these four parameters here and we want to pass them up the food chain to the box um, class, right? So we will use the super keyword and what that'll do is when we enclose these as arguments in the parentheses here, the statement will say, okay, let's go ahead and invoke the constructor for our super class that contains matching, the, the arguments match the parameters. So we've got an int, 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 and a string, and so it comes over here and says, oh yeah, we got this uh, constructor right here with um, the matching signature of int, 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 and string. So we'll go ahead and invoke this constructor here and run its code block. And so basically, whatever we're passing in as length here gets passed right back up here, and then that gets set over there. Right? So that's kind of how it works. Whatever comes in as height here, we pass it, that comes in as a parameter here, we pass it, a, repass it as an argument up the chain to this, to this box constructor, comes in as a parameter here, and then we set the, I'm sorry, the height. So we set the this.height equals to the parameter height, right? Which sets the instance variable. So that's how that all kind of chains up there. I know that can seem, a little confusing at first there, but it really will make sense. So after this statement is executed, the only other thing we want to deal with is our last um, parameter color here. So we want to set uh, this dot color, which is this instance variable right here, equal to the local variable color inside of the constructor here, which is the parameter color. Okay, with that out of the way, now let's go ahead and go up to the super class class super con super class constructors class. There's a tongue-tied thing for you. And we got the main method entry point. First thing we're going to do is declare a reference variable b1 as cardboard box object type. Then we'll call the new operator. And new will um, allocate some memory for the cardboard box object and it will invoke the cardboard box constructor that matches this signature right here. And that's an int int string string. That'll come down to the cardboard box class and say, hey, do we have a constructor that matches that? And this one doesn't, it doesn't have any arguments. Hey, this overloaded constructor um, does. So it'll pass these argument values into the parameters here, and then everything that I just went through, we'll just go ahead and execute, right? And we'll do the same thing for just a, uh, another B2 cardboard box object type reference variable there too. We'll just uh, and basically invoke the same constructor as we create that object there. Okay, after that, um, we'll call the print line method to display some stuff to the console. First is a string literal, box number one a is a, and then plus the value of b1, which is our cardboard box object, dot color, right? Dot color is one of the local instance variables down here in the cardboard object, and then plus the next string literal, um, cardboard box with a volume of and then plus b1 which is the cardboard box reference variable to that object there and then we'll invoke the dot return volume right now of course there's no return volume in here but because we extended box we have all access to all boxes members so it will uh, come in here and and basically say okay let's invoke the return volume method and that will calculate length times height times width and return that as an int value, which will then display that right there. Okay, and then plus cubic, which is a string literal, plus the b1 reference variable, and then the dot operator will access, directly access unit of measurement, right? Now b1 being the cardboard box um, object type, you know, if cardboard box doesn't have a unit of measurement in it, but because it extends box, once again, I'm just drilling these points forward, we have access to all of its members, one of these being unit of measurement. So we can directly ref directly get that value right there. Okay, let's go ahead and save this out. Type in Java C, and then the name of the file we wanna compile. And let's, uh, let's put our screen here first. Java, and then strip off that and let's run it. So box number one is a brown cardboard box with a volume of 125 cubic inches. Box number two is a white cardboard box with a volume of 3,094 cubic inches. 
All right, so we got exactly what we expected there. So the whole point of this tutorial was explaining how the super keyword will allow you to invoke a super class constructor from within a subclass. Well, specifically within the subclass constructor. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, leave you with some final thoughts there. Basically in my next tutorial, I'll explore more functionality of the super keyword. Yay, there's more to come. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.